Hello, Phantom Dusters, <laughs> and welcome to our end of tournament podcast featuring the mods of our 2024 team, Phantom Dust Draft Tag Team Tournament. I've got with me, Affin Murder Mastodon, and Sardonic Jester. Hello, all. Hello. All right. um, uh, Jay, yeah, go ahead, Murder. I was just going to say, yeah, Jay couldn't join us today. He uh, had some stuff he had to take care of, but he's here in spirit. Why, why isn't there a skill called Spirit Bomb? There really should be. Because it's trademarked by Dragon Ball Z. Bah, it's generic. It's fine. Um, that's trademark terminology. Leave it, leave it alone. Anyway, um, Easy we, answer. we have uh, a short list of topics to run through. We're going to keep it general and loose. Um, first of all, first off, um, how do we think the tournament went? Like, How did it go for you guys? Uh, I think overall it went really smoothly. Um, when we first started talking about doing the four-man team, None of us really saw any trouble with it, but I know a lot of people voice concerns that it'd be a little too complicated. Um, but with Jester and you doing all the math, I barely had to do anything with that, thank God. Uh, with the math and the charts, able to keep track of all the points, it went, it went r very smoothly, in my opinion. And uh, there wasn't a lot of issues that came up uh, throughout it. Yeah, I agree. I feel like it went pretty well. Uh, I don't think there's really, like Murder was saying, any issues on the actual tournament side. I think everything went a lot smoother than I think people expected just from how complicated it really sounded when we were saying it. But once everything actually got running, I think it was pretty straightforward. Obviously, there's a lot of little details that we didn't really go too deep into, kind of like the rating system that people don't exactly uh, uh, understand how it works. But it did what it needed to do when we made it through it. Um, other than that, I obviously we had hiccups with a lot of drops and people needing to be replaced and things like that but that just kind of happens but everybody was good sports about it we moved on and we finished it yeah the drop thing was unfortunate but with 32 people and especially when you're scrounging up people to make that 32 number you know you're scrounging up the people who are just kind of who barely play already it it's bound to happen i think altogether we had four to five total drops out of 30 some people was it even that many? Four or five. I can't understand. Yeah, four or five. Yeah, that's pretty impressive, I would say, overall. Um, and, again, and the people that did come come in picked up smoothly. There was no issue with the people we had filling in, which is what we've had that problem in the past. A fill-in just didn't want to do it anymore or like, couldn't keep up. But everyone that jumped in like was smooth as butter. It's great. Um, and on yeah, the note yeah. that Jester hinted on the rating system, we might as well go ahead and clear that up because it's honestly not as complicated as some people might think it is. So, Jester, if you will, uh, what's the motivation, what's the intention, what's the execu execution? So, in concept, it's not that complicated. In details, details are a little bit complicated, but it should be pretty straightforward. I, I, I tried to explain to a few other people how it worked. I'll still make a post on Facebook at some point, just haven't gotten to it. It, it really tries to mimic as close as possible to what Phantom Dust does itself. So if you're playing the game, you're playing tag team, you win, you lose, whatever. The way that Phantom Dust measures the score, I tried to get as close to that as possible without actually seeing any of the background code to see how it actually does it. I just took a guess based on what I, I saw. And just off the bat, should be pretty obvious that when you're playing in tag team, it's not just your rating that's being applied against everybody else's. So whoever you're on a team with, so you have... Two people on one team, two people on another team. What it does is it takes your two ratings and adds them together. So it for sure is doing that and figuring out that what it considers your team to actually be rated at is the combination of the two ratings of the two people on the team. Then it compares between those two ratings on both sides to try and figure out how many points are won or lost between a win or a lose. Just to take it easy and just put it in the most simple way, if your team is rated higher than the other team, if you lose, you're losing more points. If the, so if you beat a team that's better than you, you gain more points. If you beat a team that you're better than based on the ratings, you gain less points. The whole thing is it's it's based on like expectation of winning. If your team's expected to win, and that's what it expects to happen, so you don't get as many points for that. For upsets, you get a lot more points. So it really just goes back and forth between that, and then it figures out how big of a difference in the spread that there is. So in actual phantom dust i don't know if there's a hard limit anywhere on how many points can be gained or lost um i think it goes way beyond what we kind of hard capped it at 
which at least from our standpoint for the tournament rating, just to make it more simple and not as big of swings in between, the most points that you could possibly gain if you were the most underdog you could possibly be would be 33 points from a specific uh, level win in the match. So like if you won Palace against a team that just outranks you by over 25% difference between the, the ratings, you could gain 33 points. You gain 33 points, the team that was ranked higher loses 33 points. It's all net zero. They don't lose any... You, there's always a loss and a gain of the same amount. But it hard-capped it at 33. I'm pretty sure Phantom Dust goes well over 50. Um, so we just wanted to keep it a little bit more stable so things don't swing too much. Uh, so 33 would put it at a situation that, let's say, you got blown out and you were the underdog, uh, and you were the underdog, and you blew out the other team. So at most, you can gain almost 100 points. You get 99 points total. If if even after two wins, you're still that big of a difference in between the two. So from our scale, that's not. If you look at it from like a one to ten, that's not even one point. It's it's big, but it's not that big. Um, but it's enough that over the past six weeks, it obviously made a difference, and things started changing. Um, I have screenshots that I put into the Discord chat often, but I, I don't think it's probably worth going through in that level of detail to show that it's the rating was calculated on each of the ma- uh, each of the levels in the match, and it goes in order. Because obviously, when you're comparing and doing that and looking between the two, on tell me what the percentage difference is between the ratings of the two teams, it's going to change after every single level that you do. So it was really important to keep track of who won what levels in what order to figure out what actual points were lost or gained. That I'll go through in the details in the Facebook post. I don't think it's needed here. Here it should be fairly straightforward. Just look at what Phantom Dust does. It tries to mimic that pretty much as close as possible. And again, if you were ranked higher than the other person and you lost, you you lost a lot of points. If you were ranked lower than the other team and you won, you gained a lot more points. That's just how it worked. So... We sh- he said the word we a bunch of times in there. It's really all Jester. We had no part of this whatsoever. <laughs> there were some suggestions thrown in. He, he did all this oh, by don't himself. Do that to me. <laughs> it was don't some... throw me under this bus. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we call Sandal the mad scientist of Phantom Dust, but for all intents and purposes, Jester is an actual mad scientist with this. <laughs> all these calculations and formulations. Yeah, um, that's impressive. Yeah, uh, to that end, do we foresee, and this is a question for the, for the community as well, do we foresee using this rating system going forward in future tournaments or in any other capacity besides tag teams? Um, what do you think? Or should we even? It depends. Like, we, I think we'd be using it again uh, for certain situations. If we were to ever do another draft tournament, obviously it could be useful. Um, if we were to do like a draft tournament, we could only... Like, let's say you had to cap off. But your team can only be worth so much points, if that's be a way we could look at it. Um, if we were to do, like, the Giants versus Shrimp thing, it'd be a way to differentiate Giants and Shrimps, obviously. And also, we also talk about the four-man the four, the four man teams. We could once again set a cap for teams, so no team is overbearing uh, a way to balance it out. Like, your team can only be worth a max of random number 3,000 points. So... I could see some uses for for future tournaments for sure. In a standard tag tournament, I'd be I'm not really sure. It, it really depends. Yeah, l- like you're saying, it, in a standard, it really depends on what way the the moderators decide to go. If if everyone tries to if they go the normal way that we normally do, and it's just a random pairing right off the bat, and then from there it's the normal Swiss or whatever you want to call it that it goes through based on that ranking. Then yeah, then it then it really doesn't do anything. The only thing that that it only it, it's really just to go in the very opposite way of that. So instead of being random where you can get a team that's the absolute rank one team against a team that's gonna be the worst, or just play is not at the same level as the rank one team, that's all the rating is trying to prevent. And that's the only re- way that you would really include this. If you don't care about that, like we normally don't for the tag team, it wouldn't really make sense. Say putting that in place, I honestly, as long as I'm still in the community and watching and keeping track, I'll probably just keep scores going and keep tracking them and keep updating them as we go. Whether yeah, or not we I use them is idea. a different thing, but it 
it really doesn't hurt. And I don't know, at least for me, I, I like to keep track of like even my own scores and games to see how I'm doing against other people and things like that. But yeah, it does it actually need to get needed? Uh, does it actually need to get used? I don't know. Really depends on the situation again and where we come out and if we saw value out of it. I thought it was nice because I think it gave I think it gave more situations where people were playing closer games, but it really really could go that way even if we picked the matches as well. I just it was an attempt to try and get people to play against other people they don't normally play by shifting them around based on their rating. Yeah, so I, I think we should go over this real quick. The reason we did the uh, rating team to begin with is because obviously we did a uh, blind matchups. You didn't know what the other team was picking. Our original idea was to just do it completely blind. So then you could have like Zanxis and Mass versus, I'm not going to call anyone else out in particular, but two people who do not match that. You skill can use level. my name. I'm right people. here. Go for it. Okay, Athens and Orange, <laughs> my favorite people on earth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and just have that un uneven matchup uh, happen multiple times. Like you do, that happens one time in a tournament. You're not too upset uh, in this environment, at least. But then you know that happens. If it were to happen to you multiple times, you may start getting, not having as much fun. So we came up with to use the uh, rating system uh, instead, which was initially much less complex. And then Jester with his brains <laughs> made it into what it is now, which is I I really like it personally. Okay. I think it did a good job at what it was supposed to do. Agreed. And let me go ahead and provide my mea culpa for this whole situation. I I would have never gotten tired of being facing Zanxus and Ebony however many times because I just like playing. And I this is me explaining the draft thing that I did again. Um, I tried to choose people who also wouldn't get tired of playing whoever because we just like getting games. I did not realize it would make people that upset, honestly, because I feel like I'm just playing Phantom Dust. Who cares? <laughs> That was me. I didn't think beyond the front of my face. So I own that, and I've owned up to that quite a bit since the trap started. But again, in, that's why, personally, I can do with or without the rating system, because I don't mind playing whatever top-tier team however many times, because that means I get to try to play people. I don't I don't always get to play them anyway because of my schedule. So that I have no issue with that whatsoever. Um, Orange, I don't think, has an issue with that either. Mark and Alice, they love getting games with whomever. Like, at the end of the tournament, Alice and Killer Mark were scrambling to get a match with Zanxus. They wanted that mismatch, quote unquote, mm -hmm. on some supposed mismatch. Like, they were hungry for it. So, yeah, and with the exception of Evo, I don't think anybody was on my team was that. <laughs> um, they didn't have that, that many misgivings about what I had gone through in terms of my, my setup. Uh, but I do, I will own that. People have said I ruined the tournament or made it un didn't function as well as it could have. I can see that, um, and I do apologize apologize for that. So, water under the bridge. I was, I was upset with you at first, but uh, at first I thought you did it too troll, honestly. But now I believe what you just said, so I'm not really that upset about it anymore at all, honestly. Um, I wouldn't say I'm necessarily upset about it. I we kind of rolled into the questions of highlights and lowlights. I'd kind of put that on the lowlight from my <laughs> standpoint of the tournament. Yeah, it, okay, I will say yeah, it, it did it, mess it, up the points a lot because anytime a team played you, your team, the 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 swing differential in points was insane. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if Athens like, team ever won, you auto they automatically were going to go positive in points, and whoever lost them even one round yeah. was going to be negative. Yeah, basically so that, right off the bat. That did mess it up from the overall point standpoint. Uh, it only happened a few times, so <laughs> don't worry about it that much. <laughs> I am curious the, the three the, the three zero in the final round that I think Ska and Alice got. I'm curious how how big that swing was. I think it was Ska and Alice. Oh, man. Um, it was Ska and somebody. No, it was Ska and Midas. They got a three zero. Um, against Nathan and no who was Game it? God. No. I forget, but yeah, that, I'm I can't, I can't very curious how big that point swing was. Ah oh, man, I'll I'll look that I'll look that up for you, and I'll be able to find that. I don't have it on on this computer, but I'll I'll look that up afterwards, and I'll send it to you. I would assume probably pretty damn big. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, since it was mentioned again, uh, highlights and lowlights. Um, we were gonna do favorite match, but murder doesn't watch the product. Um, not throwing shade. Oh, it's man, a. <laughs> <laughs> but so we'll stick with favorite moments and or least favorite moments um and if you guys don't have one then i'm happy to start because i've got a couple all right go ahead 
Yep, um, ahead. and not to you know pat myself on the back, but <laughs> me and Sandal with the with the kites against choices in Palace. <laughs> so if, since oh, murder, I have to explain this to you guys. So we faced choices, Sandal and, and I did, and we both picked monsters with swords against choices. Um, and we made a, gave him a really bad time with it. Cause he, <laughs> for those of you who don't know, you really can't time the sword swing on the monsters on a couple Wait, of them. Who was Choices' partner? Uh, this was Choices and uh, Jay. War Machine, maybe? Might have been oh, War I don't think it was. Was it Jay? It might have been Jay. Oh, who was that? That I think I could look up real quick. Uh, I give forget. Me a second. It might have been. War Machine makes more sense, but. Uh... It was you and Sandal versus. You and Sandal? Yeah. Yeah, it was it was choices and war machine. Choices and war machine, yeah. And you, those those sword swings don't have a sound sometimes too. So if they're behind you, you just don't hear it coming. <laughs> and we made it really bad for them in that palace match. They still came back and won, but choices got to relive the nightmare of getting whomped, mo- molly whopped by a sandal <laughs> as a monster on palace with swords. Yeah, that was pretty dirty. <laughs> <laughs> and now I have a whole arsenal so based on that. Well, the, the uh, flame swords, lightning swords, ice swords, those are pretty slow. But all the spinning ones, um, Psycho yeah, Blade, Blade, Excalibur, are terrible. those are gross. Those are terrible. <laughs> yeah, I think you're running around with Tiger Strength uh, Psycho Blades, too. So you're hitting for like seven, like it was an Excalibur just out of the blue. And yeah, that big, huge wraparound swing around the, the kite was just crazy looking. Just silly, <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. All right, you guys got anything? And I don't. <laughs> all right all right i'll go again um i mentioned it in the on the cast and in the comments but it was uh evo and kanye versus jay and jester actually yeah the lovers embrace i think it was uh yep <laughs> on refinery when you guys both your health zeroed out at the same second and you fell towards each other <laughs> it was <laughs> such a great visual um ah we'll just skip all that bullshit i've got too many random things um uh, mvps of the tournament Uh, MVP, uh, I mean, I'm going to be really corny here and say all the captains because they made our jobs really easy. So oh. They did. You're a like, sweet guy. Just having to deal with people for the most part and, you know, us having to babysit, it was, we didn't have to really do much of that. But if we're talking about gameplay, obviously it's Jay or uh, Bregan because neither of them lost. The entire, except for the very end, obviously, where Bregan uh, lost the final match with Rise, but up to that point. He, uh, he lost, lost week match. one, too. Bregan did? Yeah. Not what? that matters, but. Wait, yeah. Jay didn't lose a match the whole time? <laughs> In that case, Jay did not. Damn. In that case, Jay is the MVP. He won nice. Went the entire tournament uh, without a loss. Uh, that's Let's phenomenal. Let's see who else didn't. Uh, and, okay, so I'll just jump right into mine right away. So mine, mine was going to be Schmidt. So Snow Schmidt actually also did not lose a single match. Really? He didn't. He didn't lose the cats in the match either. And when it comes to the actual points, he he gained most by far. Wasn't even close. In that so case, Schmidt huh? went above and beyond. Won every single match. He won the captains match. Uh, it, it, I think he won the first captains he, match he, too. No, that was Rise. That was okay. Rise won that. Okay. Yeah, Schmidt really pulled it out. The other person I would have out is, is also on Schmidt's team. I thought Triple really stepped yeah. it up as well. Like, he got put in situations the last two weeks that were really, really rough. But up until that point, like, he he's just kicking ass. Uh, those are those are who I'd put as the top two. Jay, I'd, I'd love to give it to Jay since Jay didn't lose it all either, but he's Jay, man. He's, he's at another <laughs> level. I, I expect it out of Jay. <laughs> it, on that point, too, like, I'm going to go with Triple as well, because from what we saw of him in the first draft tournament, what we saw of him here, and what we come to still be, well, it's, it's starting to be surprising that we see it every time, but it shouldn't be, because, but I legit think he's, like, butting up on that S tier. Honestly, he's one of those guys now that it's, like, tough to face no matter who it is. Um, just watching him play, like, the, the manuals are so disgusting. I it hurts my heart, but he's 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 that guy. He really is, and it. She showed up in the final two, and and pretty much every other match in the tournament, except for, save for a few. But um, just from an improvement and from not expecting a standpoint, um, and on, arguably Schmidt is 
showed up better with that information, but I'm going to stick with triple because it's been, it hadn't been said already. But uh, yeah, triple's my guy. Sentimental MVP. I'm gonna go, go ahead. I'm going to go back question and go to a low light real quick that I just remembered. When me and Bragan had to face Zanxus and triple, we were really excited about the match. And then uh, the triple's connection that day just made the entire room so laggy that it was. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can notice it in the game, in the video, but it was super laggy. Zanxus would tell you, like, Rians were shooting out like a like a second later, making them hard to cartwheel and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So it kind of brought down the mood of the match. Mm -hmm. We were all so excited for it. And then that happened. I was bummed. Unfortunate. Yeah. I don't think it showed up too well on the, the recording, because I, I remember seeing the, the actual group chat, and I I saw that you guys were saying there's a lot of issues, but I don't remember the recording making it seem like as bad as it sounded. I think it's from Bragan's point of view, and Bragan was next to Zanxus most of the time while I was shooting at Triple. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, when I was looking at Triple, he was moving like a 1920s film reel. <laughs> right. That, that was that match where you had, you had to dig for your life on Palace, I believe. Like that's you didn't just, get, that's... yeah, that makes sense because oh, you were never on camera. No, that... that wasn't that one. No, no, because I got a super good start on Palace if Bregan brought the right arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> how ironic! Anyway, um... <laughs> we're not gonna talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along. No, I have a personal yeah. <laughs> a personal MVP, um, and it's Evo. Uh, my God, he stuck through a lot, and and he he never he never griped. He never complained once in the chat to me or, or to me, yeah, or about me to my face. Um, I could sense things because there was a couple of scrims where I ended up on his team and he, it, it came out there, but he hung the hell in there and he stuck it out and he played every match. He showed up, he added, I gave advice here and there. He did not gripe to me or in the chat, not one time. Uh, that dude's a fucking trooper. He really, really is. Um, I, I dare anybody to say bad shit about Evo. And him being like a good, a good sport. <laughs> nah, he he did handle it good. I I asked him in the beginning. I was like, "Are you gonna drop?" He's like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> we gave him an out too. We said like, "We could, we'll trade you if you don't want to be here." And he's like, "Nah, it's not in my blood. Like, I made a commitment. I'm good." And he did. <laughs> nah, it's prop. Yeah, he stuck it out. Not. Right. <laughs> it would have been tough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Next thing then. Um, did tournament MVPs. So, uh, what's what do we think is next um, for the Phantom Dust community in terms of tournaments, in terms of just fun things? Uh, any ideas, preferences, even? I'm looking forward to uh, Murder starting back up the uh, the Battle Royale thing. I think I'll actually jump in a couple times coming up. Yeah, I, I definitely. That's one thing I was gonna say. I definitely plan on starting it back up. I may even start it up tomorrow if I. Stop being lazy. I just played video games like all day. <laughs> day nothing use. So I, I may um, talk to the other mods on that and try to get them to get back on it. And you know, then, who, um, you know who's real excited about that? Fucking Killer Mark. That dude yeah, is like yeah. frothing yeah. at the mouth. <laughs> like the second the match got posted, he posted back in there like, start the shit up. <laughs> Give me a second, man. Yeah, um, I'd actually kind of forgotten about the Battle Royal League thing as as like a I didn't consider it a tournament, but yeah, those are lots of fun. Um, I think I'd be interested to see how the community handles a straight up tag tournament in the old style after these two drafts in a row. Like, what things change because there's lots of new like uh, uh, relationships now. I think the meta's even changed over a few times since the last regular tag tournament. So that'd be be curious to see how that turned out, or even if we got the same turnout as we had for the last uh, two tournaments. Uh, but otherwise, well, I know yeah, sure. Some more people like uh, I've seen Peer and Jokers online a lot more. Phantom Dust uh, fueled and their buddy Chef Ron are on more often. And I'm they every I talk to them and they said if we do a normal tag tournament, they plan on joining. I'm sure Peer does too because he's super competitive. Mm -hmm. So I expect some some new faces for sure. Um, if we do a standard one, which we have to talk about later, because right. uh, yeah. And we did have a question, sort of in the vein of the last few things, um, from the, the post you put up. Do we think there could be like a mentor-mentee season or tournament uh, for, for people getting back into the game or on lower skill levels? So people have been wanting to do a shrimp giant type tournament where a newer player teams up with a more veteran player through a series of matches. 
uh, but it, this may be just the way I'm looking at it, but the way I look at the draft tournaments were kind of set up like that because you're going to team with people all of uh, all skill level, but also you're in the chat and they're trying to help you because they want you to win for their team. So they're giving out advice, or at least in the chats I was in, they were giving out advice, trying to help you build arsenals and stuff like that. Um, if we were to do a dedicated, like, giant shrimp tournament, it'd be far off in the future. Um, and it'd also be probably a shorter tournament, like the, uh, you know, the one-day type tournaments or maybe a weekend type tournament. Yep. Really agree. I was going to say the same thing. I, I don't think there would be enough turnout to be able to go ahead and make it a full-on tournament. And I don't think it would include enough of the community that it would really go that long. For a That's shorter amazing. one weekend or one day, I, I think it would be something cool to knock out or in the future. <laughs> Not to mention, it'd be super difficult to make that even. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, agreed. Like, what... Where in what situation does Zanxus not just win? <laughs> like, <laughs> if he's teamed up with Affin. Oh, okay, there we go. Sorry, we figured it out. We'll the ultimate through. giant and the ultimate shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it'd be very difficult to work out um, that one too. That'd just be super difficult. So I, I don't want to. I'm not gonna lie. I, I just don't want to set that up. I'm not gonna lie to people. I get a lot of shit if uh, we were to do that. I can already see the complaining. I can see it. Yeah. In visual. Fear. See, and, and I, I kind of agree with that, but I think the people that are even going to be included in it, not included, but the people that would even be interested in it or considering doing it wouldn't be the people that would complain about it because they're not going to be the people that are really taking it as a competitive level. Right away, you should know that type of tournament is going to be as casual as possible, as super, super casual, not really competitive. It's more or less to try and be a, like calling it mentor mentee versus the shrimp and giant thing. It's supposed to be more of a learning experience and right, yeah. watching somebody carry somebody else or as much as possible kind of thing. And and that's what makes oh. it difficult. All the all the mid level players, like I don't know where they would fall in. Very good point. At all. That's why I don't I think most wouldn't even be included. I would be so very surprised if there ended up being more than four teams. So four teams of two. I uh, if there's more than that, then I think yeah, there would need, need to be a lot more thought put into it and things would need to be figured out, but can only think of a handful of, full of people that would really be interested in doing it and would fit into the the shrimp or giant role instead of being just a mid-tier like the majority of us right yeah <laughs> so for the people who wrong. are interested in that sort of a thing um make a thread make a post asking for suggestions or advice and jump in the lfg chat and see who's willing to help you out um that's probably going to get you up to where you want to be faster than hoping for an entire tournament set up more than likely because um, yeah. there are definitely people who are willing to take you under their wing or just like give you some arsenal advice. Yeah, for sure. Right. Um, another tournament idea that we've been throwing out for a while that I really hope happens one day, but probably not next, um, is the four-man team tournament. I still really like that idea, and I want to do it in the future, uh, maybe sometime next year. Definitely will not be the next one, though, yeah. but soon. I think that yeah. just sounds super cool. Just being able to pick three other people and just play with them no draft just hey you 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 do you want to be on a team cool let's do this totally agree um a faction warfare speaks to me on a base level so i'm all for that 100 percent. yeah i think that sounds really fun i think it would be fun but that one's that that one's gonna absolutely run into the situation of having maybe what two or three super top tier teams that just kind of roll over everybody else <laughs> well that's why that one for sure would be like you know what you're getting into whereas yeah. it's just like you want to play with your these people like you just like to group up with these people and you just know you're going to try your hardest and you may not win <laughs> like right. i don't know yeah but yeah. also we could do we could try our best to limit it with your fancy point system like i suggested earlier yeah, it's fancy, but <laughs> your team can only have a maximum point of 3,000. So you do all the math. If your team equals up even a point over that, then you have to find new teammates. You have to make it work. Yeah, I'd even just forget the limit thing, because if it's supposed to be playing with, playing with people who you like, then just let it well, happen. Yeah. I'm just saying if it was that big of an issue. Right, right. Or yeah. if people, where people didn't want to join because they felt it was going to be uh, that kind of situation. Got it. Um I don't foresee that happening. I think 
where mostly people enjoy a good challenge. I think it would go great personally. Um, in terms of this this past tournament, is there anything that we would definitely do or definitely not do again in terms of how it was run? Uh, Jester, you want to go first? Oh, I'm just going to be a dick and kind of throw half and under the bus again. Sorry. <laughs> so if we did do this again, we definitely would not allow that type of situation to happen. Uh, at least in my mind, I, it, it kind of, I, I get it was totally a casual tournament. It was for fun. A lot of people in the tournament took this way more seriously than they were supposed to. And then they should have. And just the fact that one of the teams really wasn't nearly as competitive or built in the same kind of mindset as the others, I think really kind of messed around with things. Cause like even just looking at the final, final scores for how everything went, it was pretty, pretty telling that only three of the teams were really in it to, to compete. The other one was just kind of there, like no <laughs> offense or anything, but it just <laughs> ended up being that way. <laughs> I, I, I know most people don't have problems with that, but then there's other people that obviously do have problems with that. And that, as much as we tried to say it was casual, a lot of people took it just too seriously. And then it became a weird situation where people were not happy. And that's that's where more issues came up with substitutions. Then if people substituted for people that were better, then, in, oh, that team actually has a chance of winning and blah, 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 whatever. Um, <laughs> other than that, I think I, I think I liked pretty much everything that happened. And I would do everything over again not soon hopefully because we need a normal tournament for once uh but yeah, yeah. my opinion other than that i think everything went fine um I, I agree maybe the only other thing i could think of changing <laughs> is uh is uh the captain situation i i, I know we tried something different because we tried to roll over from the other tournament into this tournament on who got to be the captains i think it went mostly fine but we still did end up in a situation, again, it might have just be, been because of how Affin chose his teams, but there were some more weighted teams than others that it might have been better to go based off of wins and losses than, than strictly the, uh, the points. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Murder? That's it. Sorry. Done rambling. <laughs> nah, you're good. I, I agree with what Jester said. Everything. Uh, I def what. One thing we've definitely planned on using, I want to use again, is the point system. I liked it. I even liked the way it put out matches. If you look through um, the matches, with the exceptions of the one that Team Athens are on, the the matches were able to come out pretty even. Like, it's Zanxus and, you know, it was Zanxus and Carbon versus um, whoever, but it would be mostly an even matchup just because of the way the point system. I actually really liked that. So I hope we get to use something like that in the future. I definitely want to use the point system again in the future in some way, shape, or form, even if it is just continuing updating it. Um, one thing we are never going, I never want to do again. Uh, yeah, I never want to deal with substitutions again. Yeah. Ever. <laughs> um, but, you know, sadly, there's, I say I don't want to, but sadly in a, in a t tournament like that, there's not really an option. Um, because if one person dropped, if you just suddenly have 31 people, it just the tournament doesn't work anymore. It just doesn't. Um, yep. And, and there's like... no real easy way to go about doing it because not everyone's on the same skill level. Um, I'm just going to say this here, too, because I know it's a question a lot of people have asked me. When I substituted Fuel in, the reason I did it without posting isn't anything is because... The four moderators, the three other moderators, we talked about it uh, before. Like, what if, because we already discussed, like, what if someone drops? You know, there's not a lot of options. We were all like, just sub in whoever, just so we can keep the tournament going. Cause to us, more important than balanced teams and all this was just having the tournament keep going at that point. That we all agreed on that. We even said bring in like Geigman or PD if we had to, as long as the tournament kept going. And. So I grabbed someone who I, I've never played with, but I knew he was super cool, and I know he was not Geigman level because he doesn't play that often. So I just grabbed the first guy who I could think of because their tournament match was supposed to happen that night. Yep. So we actually ended, we did end up subbing Geigman at right some point to too, because Ebony couldn't play his last match, so Geigman had to step in. Geigman <laughs> had to step in anyway. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 
Uh, completely agree. That was the right way to do it. And that I, if people want to disagree, they can disagree all they want. We we said in the beginning, flat out, it was a more casual type situation. It wasn't. It's obviously going to be casual. You're rotating teammates every single game. It's 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 not two teams that you know, and you're getting all this experience together and playing against other people. It's just random people thrown into buckets, and you're playing against people. Yeah. It's going to be casual. It's more important for us to continue the tournament and keep going and get actual just matches played than making sure all the matches were absolutely as close as possible and as fair as possible. It, it, who cares if you win or lose? Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just to make it unanimous, um, I would also never let me draft again <laughs> so that we're perfectly clear, <laughs> or at least not draft in the way that was done. I would keep, I would keep it status quo. Um, respect the rating system, respect the hard work. Um, if it came to that, which it never will, because I'll never be allowed to. But if it did, I would, you know, I, I play the game. You know what's super funny? Like, I forgot. Maybe it was like two weeks before the draft. We were talking, and we were talking about making you not a captain. We were like, maybe we shouldn't let Affin captain. And we were, <laughs> like, you were in the chat. You were like in the chat. This was like behind your back. We were all doing it in the chat, and you're like, no, don't take this from me. And you're like, okay. <laughs> and now look at us, <laughs> <Fucking> idiot! <laughs> you stabbed us in the back, man. I stabbed you in right the front. In the it was right in the face. <laughs> you were like, "Oh, come on, don't, don't take this from me." And I was like, oh, "All right." <laughs> uh, I think well, now we can get to the thing that everyone cares the most about: t-shirts. Uh, what's going on with the shirts? Uh, 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 the shirts are. They should be done by the end of this week. Um, the person who is just someone, one of my friends, has been working very hard on them in the past few months. Uh, we've had some hiccups in terms of the design of the shirt for some reason. They've been very hit and miss. But this last one we came <laughs> that he came up with was very spot on. As soon as he, as soon as I get um, the picture of the final product, I'll post it on the page. You guys, I've been posting him in the LFD because he has some of the. Uh, practice shirts that I just have now um, and I've been posting some of those so they kind of kind of look like that um, they look pretty awesome though um, hopefully within the ne next week or two he'll have the finished product and then I will be shipping them to Jester um, who will be collecting everyone's information very soon um, you will be have to pay him through what are you going to I'll let Jester talk about that since so we, we don't have to go back and forth just so you want to go over the payment and all that stuff that's fine so like like murder was saying they're going to be sending the the shirts over as soon as they finish i'll just store them at my house instead of filling up uh, murder's house with all of them payment wise we'll we'll figure it out so i got paypal venmo you've got cryptocurrency i don't care we'll figure <laughs> out some way to get the money i cash app whatever you can think of i'm sure whatever you have or can do i can have or do um i've got the list together from the few other surveys that we've done of who wants what sizes and how many we needed and things like that um so obviously i'll i'll be posting that again as well and posting out and tagging everybody in it and saying hey here's what i see here's what you ordered this is the sizes and then we'll go from there on figuring out getting the information to me probably just through a direct message on facebook is probably going to be end up being the easiest or through messenger or whatever uh Again, payment, not really too terribly concerned on because I'm sure we'll figure out ways. There's PayPal, Venmo, et cetera. We'll talk about it when we get into the uh, direct messages. Um, obviously, like what we discussed, so part of the tournament is that the winning team gets them free, I think. Yeah. Just correct me if I misstate that. And I know I'd have to find the, the posting. I know then the next team after that gets a discount. The third place team gets a discount. I think full fourth place team is full price. Uh, full price, Did baby. We I did, thought that's what it was, wasn't it? We definitely no? said that. We trust did me. We, okay. we definitely said that. I'm well aware. I thought it was only first place gets free shirts. I didn't even know about the rest. Oh, I thought we did. Maybe. Uh, damn. Uh, I remember. I. Put... Okay. Well, let's not put a fine point on it. I remember the discount <laughs> tier system too. But we all know that Affin's paying full price regardless. Uh, did you Affin? You want to share your team's? I already told him. It's thing. fine. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, did you did you do the math already for how about how much the shirts are gonna cost? Um, if you were to pay full price there, Jester, just um, a roundabout number. Not yeah. Not what did I? That. 
I think when I put the survey on, when asking people if they would even want to shoot or not, I think I put like about twenty dollars is what it ended up being. Um, I think that's still going to end up being about the same. I think no matter what, I'm going to have to eat some cost on these anyways. But I, I, I think that's probably going to be the most reasonable. Um, shipping is going to end up being weird for some people, and again, we'll we'll figure it out on how to get it to you and try to make it as reasonable as possible to get to everybody. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm assuming it's going to be right about $20. I'll, I'll go more into detail. Like I said, when I figure out the list, I'll try to get a more, uh, set in stone number. And again, if it's a little over $20, I'll just tap it at $20 anyways, and just go from there and not worry about it too much. Um, again, I, I mentioned it in the survey too, as well. I understand the whole pandemic thing has been difficult for everybody. I'm sure everybody's in different situations in their life and different, situations for finances and things like that if there's anything that if you really want a shirt really bad and there's something that you just can't swing it it's not worth the the swinging or it's going to put you in a, any kind of hardship let me know i'm sure we can work something out obviously it's not necessarily everybody's going to get just a free shirt or something like that but if you're one of the active members of the, the community and you got stuff going on or whatever just reach out to me directly it doesn't need to be a public post or anything like that just let me know and we'll we'll figure something out i'm gonna need I, a gofundme page for everyone every single one uh tell a story i want three <laughs> three paragraphs minimum single spaced uh make it happen ouch <laughs> <laughs> uh closing thoughts hold on hold on what's up can we can we rag on rise <laughs> the wrong? no no <laughs> because if we rag on rise and i have to rag on the other person and not only no, do that. No, just on Rise, because Rise can't. did it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> look, it, it's happened to all of us. We've all walked into a lobby with the wrong something, either the wrong character, the wrong arsenal, the wrong. We okay, haven't. Okay. We didn't switch the map. It happens. It happens. Hold on, hold on. So Rise brings the wrong arsenal, and then Bregan says, "I don't trust you. <laughs> Send me a message of the arsenal you just chose." And then Rise puts it into his tournament. Wait, Rise, Rise being a good teammate, abides by his teammates' request and does the does the legwork, right? Let's not let's not mince words here. And puts it into a place where Schmidt and Triple, his opponents, can see, and leaves it there for like a minute. They definitely see. It. Look, look, <laughs> it's. <laughs> It was ludicrous. <laughs> <laughs> and it, this, Poor guy. this was this was direct <laughs> directly after taking eight damage from the pillars trying to hang something on Palace. Like that's just <laughs> the yeah, it was the Murphy's Law, like and we were saying in the cast, the Murphy's Law of tournament matches. Absolutely everything that could have gone wrong in that match did go wrong. And even the one aura start on lane after that too, just <laughs> Unbelievable! Ah, oh, that was just yeah. That one hour start on lane was uh, disheartening. Yeah, if if Rise yeah. doesn't cartwheel into that boost mine, then that match is over, over even faster. Just absolutely. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Forgot about that. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to give Rise some shit. <laughs> that, was insane. that was insane. Good times. Good if times. If he didn't do that, he definitely would not have got third. I'm just saying. Just saying. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, now closing thoughts. Uh, I just want to uh, say thank you to everyone who participated again and uh, all the captains. And uh, to all the casters, especially you, Av, and thanks for casting all the matches, Bregan. You guys, that takes a lot of time. And people don't realize that. It's crazy to me that people were, like, complaining about their <laughs> matches not being cast. I'm like, dude, like, give them time. Like, they, they work. They have, like, other stuff to do. They have kids, like. I'm sorry your match didn't cast immediately. Like, that takes time. So thank the, you to all the casters and uh, everyone who participated. The the last handful that got put up at the same time, Bregan was just burnt out from doing it. And just I, just, I sensed the, the the tension building, people wanting their matches done. So I, I went out into, into the car at, like, 1 in the morning. I know. And just knocked them I out. Know, like, people don't realize that man uh, yeah Bregan told me that i'm like damn that's crazy well not and even that like, too because i my laptop doesn't really it's not equipped to like stream and record at this like the sound in the video at the same time it would have been choppy as hell so i just had to record my voice and then later edit the sound file onto the match videos <laughs> that would line up yeah 
That's great, man. So we appreciate and it. Thank you very much. Jester, final absolutely. thoughts? I, I, absolutely. Everybody that, that murder thanked, same. Uh, it It's crazy the amount of work that, that people put into putting these tournaments together. This is the first one that I've somewhat helped out with trying to organize, and I... And I don't know how you guys have been doing this for years. Somewhat helped out with being, <laughs> this is being insane. Modest. The bones of the, the entire thing. All the, spread charts, all the spreadsheets, all the math. That's all Jester. Like, I don't do any of that because I would mess it up. <laughs> Jester does all that. He also tells me when I have a bad idea. So I like that, too. <laughs> we argue a lot. So, yeah, it's good. I'm I'd say I probably <laughs> argue the most out of all of us. But, yeah. 100%. <laughs> I'll Definitely. argue everything. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah, I'm gonna. <laughs> but shout no, out. yeah, you guys are crazy. Yeah, <laughs> you guys specifically too, because you were the mad, the mad scientist that thought up the concept in the first place, and there was a lot of trial and error thoughts or like suggestions about how how it would be run from the double blind that I liked to this tiered system that everyone else seemed to like for some reason. Uh, yeah, like it got whittled down from a very vague thought to this nicely refined thing that worked out fantastic. Uh, so yeah, that's all, including Jay as well. Big ups to you guys. And I think with that, that will conclude our winter four-team draft tournament and our mod podcast. Got it in there. Um, thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned for whatever comes next. Later. See ya. Thank you.